All right, so as you guys can imagine, my wife was not super thrilled about me buying a tank, and she said I had to get rid of it. So I told her I can do that, but I have to buy a transport truck to be able to move the tank because it's so heavy. So we went out and bought a 1987 extended bunk K100 Kenworth. This one's been sitting in a barn since 96, 3406B mechanical caterpillar in it. <laughs> Drivers didn't want to drive cab overs anymore, so they parked it in a barn. Perfect for us because these K100 double bunk Kenworths are very sought after. It's gonna be a nice truck when it's done. And a lot of people do these up really nice. We want to do something the same way. Now, we did just buy a GMC Astro, and you guys begged me not to scrap it, but you guys have to trust my judgment when something is too far gone to save it. So we're gonna find out if this K100 was a good buy or how much this is gonna to take to get it back on the road. Here we go. There was two of them on Facebook for sale. And originally, I was going to build them into one. Yeah. I ended up buying this thing instead. So. Okay. But you have never heard it run because the last engine we bought no. destroyed itself in like four minutes. <laughs> never heard it run. They say each race for men, cats are for old ladies. Do your thing. I'll just pull this thing off with my Detroit powered tank. How's that? It, it's a man thing. Detroit. <laughs> Told you. <ya. laughs> No brakes, so we'll just increase the rolling resistance. <laughs> There she is. There lots of ideas with this truck that somebody had. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on. They started cutting the rails off the back. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, the reason that we bought it is because somebody decided to start fixing it. They're smarter than we are. I don't think that you would start rebuilding it or stripping it, getting it ready for sandblasting if you didn't think that the engine was okay. So we'll definitely do an oil change on it and then probably stretch the frame. So VNR gets lots of trucks on all the time with a much better suspension. So we should be able to just cut it off and then um, stretch it a little bit just to go for that look, make it a little bit more comfortable of a ride. Uh, but first things first, we got to figure out exactly what we got. So um, VNR has lots of connections with uh, people in the industry. So there's parts inside the cab, which I'm not thrilled about, but the intake and some exhaust and the hangers and stuff are nicely damaging the cloth. I don't really want to replace that, but we'll do a super deep clean on the inside of the cab because it's all there and it's all original and it's in excellent shape. So first things first, let's uh, check some of the stuff out and then see what we got. Here we go. best find of the day is the hand pump to raise the cab that I am the most excited about because that was missing. OK, 
Okay, so this truck is relatively clean compared to our last truck. But I've done some gross things in my life. And rolling up a trucker's mattress from 35 years ago is probably on the top of the list. Ugh. All right. Here's that paper. called a map. This is in Indiana. So you follow the road and you turn left and right. This is kind of cool. Color print film camera. So this sticker is put on afterwards probably by the company. I almost don't want to open that. That's uh that's pretty uh, legit. Brand spanking new. I don't think these are any good anymore. Oh this one's probably still good. It's still wrapped up. If you were to uh, forget these and they hit the windshield, that's what does that. I think we got everything out. We'll uh, tip the cab up. Here we go. Okay, got our pump mounted. Got a little bit of hydraulic fluid in there. Two lines go to the front to go to the cylinders. I think this is the lock that holds it in place. And I already broke this air cylinder. I'm not even sure what that's for, but the hydraulic oil comes in through here unlocks the pin and then should start lifting the cab. So, let's see, just doing something. There we go, there's the pin moving down. So that should unlock it. This truck has a cable shifter, so to do anything except just keep pumping. All right, so we can keep going, but we don't really need to. Uh, this will give us lots of access to pressure wash it. Pull the exhaust off, make sure nothing crawled inside and made a nest or died in the exhaust. Change your fluids. Fuel filters, oil filter, throw some T6 in there. I think we're gonna do an oil analysis on this engine, send that out. Um, be lots of condensation in there, but that's fine. Uh, I just wanna know what else is in there. Once we get that figured out, then some batteries and some fuel, fire it up, and here we go. Again, no leaks on the oil cooler or anything. Super excited about this one. Um, and the fact that the whole bottom is just mint. No oxidation, like barely any oxidation on the aluminum. The aluminum's in great shape. Man, what a find. Love it. Here we go. Okay, so before we can uh, Put new oil in it, might as well drain the old stuff. We're gonna do an oil analysis on it at the same time, so we'll catch some of the oil halfway in the stream. Luckily this is stripped, so it's had an oil change before. And hopefully, unlike the 8V92 and the Astro, it didn't go to the rippers. I don't wanna see any glitter. Shell Rotella T6 is a perfect fit for this engine because it's got excellent oil consumption control. This thing's got 700,000 miles on it. It's got a long way to go yet, but there's two kinds of engine wear. There's mechanical and then there's the corrosive wear that you get from the combustion process. The Shell Rotella T6 is great at managing both. It also starts really good in the, in the cold weather. I don't know if we'll be running in the cold weather or not. It's nice and warm now, so it should fire up fairly easy. First wake up call in 25 years. Shell Rotel T6 is a full synthetic oil and that's perfect because this engine's just broken and ready to hit the road again. And we're gonna pre-lube the brand new filter um, so we don't starve it with oil. Also going to unplug the oil pressure sensor 
right there. There's a hose there. I'm gonna unplug that hose and then put a little system that I put together to pre-lube everything before we even turn it over. So put some air pressure behind the oil, put the oil all through the galleries without actually running the engine. And then we can fire it up after that. Change the fuel filters and here we go. We are pre-filling. It's a good idea to put the Shell Rotella T6 around the outside um, rather than the inside. Otherwise, anything that falls in could potentially be unfiltered. I was a bartender in a different life. Okay, so what this is is a pressure tank from uh, an old house system with a rubber bladder inside. What I do is clean that bladder 100%, stick that inside, fill that with oil, and then a little Schrader valve on the back lets you pump air into, push the oil into the engine. Works pretty slick. The only thing is you gotta make sure it's super clean and it's best to run this through a filter too yet. Okay, we've got oil in the oil fill. We've got this thing right full, so probably about two gallons into here. So we'll just put some air pressure in there. Feel it getting empty. Okay, put that line back up again. Change some fuel filters. Getting there. It's pretty amazing that these bolts are coming loose, or these nuts are coming off, even just off this clamp. But even just taking that off is just justifying that we bought the right vehicle. Flex pipe is no good. But we'll take that off, make sure nothing's living in there. Golden. Don't understand how happy I am when stuff like this works because it just adds so much to the project living in the rust belt, um, fighting with broken seized nuts and bolts. Um, and you're like, well, it's not that big of a deal uh because i'm not used to that but man what a fight and when we buy 40 year old projects and it's still coming loose that's a happy day Whoa. Even a crusty old engine has to wake up with a little bit of coffee. Let's see if we can get that in the hole. There we go. I see that go down a little bit. Already starting to turn a little freer. That clamp is loose. So there we go. That feels better. Nice. Um, and the clamp on here was loose too. It makes me wonder. If so there we go yes that's much better better way to save the turbo and just pre-oiling that you know it's been been 25 years so i don't know uh i'm sure if i would have done two or three more of the pressure tanks i would have got oil up there but every time i do that it's risking putting dirt in there too so Finding a happy medium. I think the sensor is kind of at the end of the oil system. The turbo is pretty early in the beginning, so or maybe not. No, it's the same rail. Who knows? I'm happy with that. I'll throw that back together again. Done. Okay, I'm gonna put a little electric pump on there. Get some fuel coming out. That's right before it goes into the pump, and then make sure that we got nice, good-looking fuel coming out of there.
That's not bad. All right. Of course, my pail is missing. I'll take that back up. That is now the pump is primed and the on the cat. It's driven by the drive gear there. Filters are full. Should be, should be go time. Okay, so basically, trying to see if we got some oil pressure and start to get some smoke out of the out of the tailpipe. Got the other camera going there. Nice. We got up to 30 psi there. Needles moving, dropping down again. We got oil pressure. Awesome. I think I tripped the brake earlier. I got both battery chargers going. Let's see, you. let's try it again. Need the battery chargers. Okay, this is the one. I can feel it. Thirty psi. Oh, I should be getting around everything, loosening everything up. That's gotta go. It's gotta go. Ah. If nothing else, I'm sure getting my exercise. Okay. This is the one. Turn over fast. Pain in the ass. <laughs> Got up to 40 psi there. Let's see if we got smoke coming out the exhaust. All right, I'm by myself. I saw a little bit of smoke coming out of the turbo, um, but I think my throttle was down at idle. So if I pull this or keep this, maybe I should wait for Aaron. But if I if I leave this full throttle, I imagine this tube pushes on this nut, then uh, she'll probably go. I just don't want it to rev full throttle on its own. So you should be here any minute. I'm gonna wait for Aaron. I'm confident it'll start now. Your nice oil pressure everywhere. It sounds good, no knocking. And uh, I'd rather control the throttle from here and have him up in the cab. So Aaron's up in the cab. He's uh, sitting nice and crooked. And I'll run the throttle. So if you hear me yell, whoa, 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 whoa just turn the key off. Turn the key off? <laughs> yeah, okay. but uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I don't think I'm getting 12 volts back there. So, I'm just gonna hot wire that real quick. There we go. That makes uh, the keys on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll probably go right now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so on the passenger side here. There's my fuse box and there's one called engine shut down and that one is blown. So, leave that one there for safekeeping. Put another one in there. wonder if I can hear it. Can you hear that solenoid click now? I heard it click. Is the, by the injection pump, right by the side of that long thing with all the the six lines going to it, do you hear it click? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It. Well, that was that. Okay, crank it over. I'm 
I'm not getting really any fuel out of the uh, out of the injection pump there. No. no. Okay, so here's the issue. This is the shutoff solenoid, and this is spring loaded to off. When you energize this, it will pull this in and allow the rack to come back and give fuel. But when I put this into the housing, I don't feel anything until the very end. So what's happened is inside here, the rack is stuck in the off position. Um, I have to uh, get a get some sort of, I, I'll grab the camera for a minute and see if I can see inside and what is actually what actually is that thing. I can push on it, it just doesn't come back. There's a lever in there, you can hear it, but the rack behind it isn't moving. So just from sitting so long, it's not giving it fuel. And that's why it's not running. Otherwise it would fire right up, I know it would. So I just can't stick my finger in deep enough to grab the rack and slide that over. <laughs> so I'll see if I can see it with the camera. Um, Some WD. I, I hate just spraying random stuff inside an injection pump. We could pro probably, actually, I sprayed all the injector lines with WD and they actually cracked right loose. So, um, yeah, let me grab the camera. I can tell that it's not all rusty in there. It's probably just caught on one lip. If I can pull that out somehow with a pick. At least it's not all rusty. I think we can save it without pulling the pump off. But I do want full fuel because it's already it's only 300 horse, so we we need that extra. We need all of it. <laughs> oh, dang it! There's nothing to grab it, but I know I know what's happening. So underneath that rocker, there's a lever that that pushes in, and I can take the so so like like this, right? And that lever pivots like this, and I can just push that in a hair. So I'm getting like a tiny bit of fuel. I need to grab that rod, which is just a straight skinny rod. I just need to pull that out so that it hits that lever and then is able to go back again. But it's sharp in there too. <laughs> so These little bendy straws are amazing going around corners and somewhere that you can't see. Let that sit overnight. I just need it to get past that lip and pop up a little farther. I think that's it. All right, so the rack, we're not getting any fuel out of it, but this cover in the front here, I think if we take this cover off, it's just the plungers. And this is kind of new territory for me. Injection pumps were this magic box that you don't touch because if you mess it up, you can go full fuel and destroy an engine pretty quick. And that actually happened in the shop. So basically if there was an injection pump issue. We pulled them off and sent them out and put them back on again and didn't do any warranty work. See there, this needs to move. This, this is a slide that, that would rotate your plungers and give different amounts of fuel. And that is not moving. When I when I move this, that should be moving that rack. Pretty sure. So, if not, I'm sure VMR has another injection pump laying in the yard somewhere. Imagine two wouldn't break the exact same way, so we'll see if this lever moves on this 3406B and then we'll check the injection or the horsepower rating so otherwise we'll just pull this pump off and put that on our engine so look at that this moves so nice and free there's our issue boys that would be the rack that's why we got a no start that's all I needed to know so I could try to hammer that other rack and get it to move or, this technically isn't our engine yet, so we gotta talk to James, put that back. So we have a 3406B, which is a mechanical engine, but this engine code is a C, which is 298 kilowatt, whereas we had an A, and it's 231 kilowatt. So we would jump from 300 horse to 399, and from what I can remember, I'll have to look it up online, is that all the internals on the engine and the injectors are all the same. All that magic happens in that injection pump, which is in better shape than ours. <laughs> no, 
I gotta call James. Here we go. It's always kind of nice to throw a baseline on it. Like it'd be nice to get the truck running with the 300 horse, pull a load, see what it feels like, and then throw 400 horse at it. But uh, if we can't get that other pump going, just a step. we're just skipping a step. <laughs> okay, so bad news. James says that truck is not ours and I can't have that injection pump. I think I missed it by about a day. That sucks because now we got to go online and try to find a 3406B injection pump. The problem is those engines aren't bad. Um, and the fact that when they need a rebuild, they're cheap enough to rebuild that people don't want to part it out. Off to the internet we go. Okay, boys, that was a challenge. I've spent two weeks looking for this. Um, there are not too many of them around. Uh, and went through a bunch of different wreckers locally, called them, no, we don't have anything, don't have anything, went online, and the issue is this thing is 125 pounds. So nobody wants to package this up and ship it, especially across the border. So um, the price is all over the place. Core's going for a thousand bucks and 300 bucks with nobody saying that the pump is any good. So uh, thanks to Josh Reprasad. Um, he's got a mechanic shop down in St. Anne's. Um, he's a big cat guy, so uh, an agricultural guy, and he knew that there was this pump in the back of the wreckers in an old sea container that everybody long forgot about. So they, there was a couple pumps there. This one actually had the plugs on the injectors, uh, so I think this one was decent. Uh, we're going to clean it up and then get this one sent out to get rebuilt, um, and then at least we know the pump is good. So I really hope that engine's good, <laughs> otherwise we're rebuilding that engine. Really, really love this stuff. Yeah, snap crack them. Just like the cereal. Listen to that work. So nice. So nice and clean. There we go. All right, we're here at Zager Diesel. Um, we found that core in the trailer, and part of me wanted me to just throw it on and fire it up. That was a bad idea. Uh, when it comes to fuel <laughs> injection, yes. <laughs> yeah. Go okay. through it. So th this is built from Zager Diesel right. in Dunville. You rebuild injection pumps and turbos and stuff? Yes, sir. Awesome. And you took apart our pump and uh, what'd you find a uh, broken governor lever the plunger and barrels were gummy seals were very hard okay they're very bad for over years the seals get really hard to start leaking oil and especially if it doesn't run exactly yeah, yeah. and uh this injection pump uses both oil and fuel it uses the engine oil pressure to activate the air fuel ratio valve yeah and and the, the throttle control okay so it's a pretty they even have little screens in there to filter the oil oh. for the air ratio valve. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. It's quite involved. Nice. So for the people that have never seen the inside of an injection pump, like me, mm -hmm. I kind of understand the theory of there's a camshaft and that it compresses the plungers yes. and yeah. But basically, an injection pump is its own little engine, right? Very yeah. similar. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's go over it real quick. Yes. The housing. You got bushings were okay. Yes, bushings are good. And then so this is the camshaft. Camshaft. Gets driven off of the timing Timing cover. Advance. Yeah, so now the timing advance, how does that work on this? I haven't gotten around to it yet, but there's also four flyweights in there. And as the engine speed rotates, the flyweights open up. That also allows engine oil pressure to increase advance. Okay. And decrease as oh, okay. engine RPM goes. So it moves a valve, a spool valve, they call it, inside. And that's what gives you your advance. Okay. So the flyweights and, and the thrust just basically governs the amount of oil pressure to turn up the advance or turn it down so it, it's quite a quite a big unit so this is the unit. later style this is the later style yes i don't have the early style here but it's flat here the early style has a long about maybe three inches sticking out of a valve that goes inside the injection pump camshaft okay okay 
So the earlier right. style was the 300 horse. And then the later style, I think the minimum was 350 horse. So right. that pump, you're able to tune from 350 to like to 400. 450. 450, yes. okay, yes. all right. The rack was tight when I found it and it started moving yes. more, but. So here's your rack. Okay. And here's all your segment teeth. So it was a little, you could go inside the window to check the freedom of movement. Yeah. So you found it was a little, little it was tight. A little tight, yeah. Yeah, so it's a good thing that you're going through it right now. Yeah, so each one of these teeth, as you move it, rotates one of these plungers, correct? Exactly. So here's your plunger. There's your teeth on the plungers, and they're timed to each teeth. Okay, and as the rack goes, it turns. The way the cut, it's called a helix. So the way how it's cut, it just acts like a shut off. It shuts the port off. The more you turn it, the more fuel, yep. and vice versa. Right. So no seals or anything, that's thousands of an inch clearance? Oh God, I, I have no tools to measure it. That's okay. how tight the tolerances are. Okay. <laughs> and if we drop it, we're in trouble. Yeah, right. I have to get right. the magnifying I glass I out. I won't touch anything. <laughs> and actually it's a little dry right now, but it's just so t snug, the tolerance, yeah. okay? Yeah. So say one plunger is off more fuel than the others, the engine will have, a, it will sound like a connected rods hammering. Right. So it's called a fuel knock. Yeah, because so, you're spraying too soon. Exactly. Pistons coming up and exploding and right. And yeah. a lot double of fuel. Okay. So they have to be all be equal. Yep. But if one is pumping 20 cc's more than the other because if one tooth is out, you will know. Right, right, right. So thank God for the test bench. <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure it's good before it leaves here. <laughs> right, right. And the opposite is true. If you're, if you delay it, it's getting less fuel. And it'll yes. just be lazy. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's when you hear the miss. And the miss. And, yes. Yeah. There's a special timing procedure because I'm working blind. But there's a setting on the rack where I have to measure to find center of each segment. And even on the bench I'm assembling, oh, I missed it. Yeah. Oh, I got to take it back out again and hit it again. <laughs> when I know all the plunger segments are lined up correctly, I will have a timing okay. that will tell me, yep, I'm hit it. Perfect. With the rack being seized on the original pump, what would have seized one of these helixes in the is plunger? It's actually tight. So what I'm going to do, Rich, is right now it's just apart. Nothing's lapped yet. These are maintenance surfaces. So it's such high pressure, there's no gaskets or seals, right? So what I have to do, I have a lapping block mm -hmm. with a special, like, lapping paste, but very, very fine. Yep. So I lap this area. Lap the barrel. Yep. And when I'm finished, it's gonna be like a glass mirror finish. Okay. And that's gonna be my new seat. So when I torque it down, it's gonna create a new seal. Okay. Right. So that's very important. Yeah. If it's not sealed properly, then when the pressure, the plunger's coming up, building pressure, it'll blow by and leak. Here's your sealing ring. Okay. Also, it's called your uh, pre-stroke ring. Okay. So that's what creates a ring that I have to lap also to make a seal in the housing. So this particular pump doesn't use like a a rubber seal in the bottom, like Robert Bosch does. So it's just metal to metal. Here. Okay. So everything has to be perfectly lapped. Okay. And now these are the governor weights? That's your governor flyweight. These fingers wear over yes. time and then they overextend and she runs away like a two-stroke. Yes, and I've seen where they have actually exploded so bad it breaks the cover, yeah. the intermediate governor cover, yeah. and flies out because it has expanded too much. Right. So, uh, CAT has an update now from a small thrust to a larger thrust, okay. so it doesn't happen. They're only supposed to come out maybe that much, but yep. once that thrust wears out, the small thrust, it passes the finger weight and then right into the governor housing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I do and know about the update. Really exciting. Okay. So we're getting the update? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> come on, Rich. <laughs> I found this broken. This is supposed to be like that, and that's just supposed to be on the shaft. Oh, I see. I see. So that's what it's supposed to look like. But when I took it apart, it was broken off. Okay. Okay. So I don't usually see this in this pump. When we picked it up, I noticed that this uh, was a little loose. Yeah. And that the housing was the housing broken. Was so smashed. I gave you the housing yes. and that had another one of these levers in it. Right. So we're all set. Nice. Well, you're all good. Nice. Got a nice kit to go with it here. Complete all comes with all the seals and gaskets, everything. One kit. Yep. Does everything. And so even if we got the old pump going, if it didn't run away. You guys will know, you see a third or six, you'll start leaking a lot of fuel on externally. Yep. Number one issue. So yep. once you see one start to leak, 
very sure they're gonna start leaking. Right, right. And this is the camshaft rich. As yep. you can see, it is really heavy Hefty. duty. Yeah. The lobes on it are amazing. In the years that I've been in the business, I've probably seen two that I've taken out a lobe. Okay. And that's about what usually they're very tough, solid camshafts. Right, right. So from here, cleaning everything yes. and then back to assembly again. Each segment's got to be assembled together and then we put them in. Nice. Just like assembling a piston with range and yep. put them in the engine. So it's basically the same except we're pumping fuel. Yeah. We're not pumping compression. Yeah. Okay, so we're back at Zegger Diesel and you found something in the timing advance? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> always, and it's all fixed? They always wear out, Rich. Yeah, okay. So it's a good thing when you do the injection pump, always send it out, get it done. You can even rebuild, it, rebuild those yourself. Yeah. You can piece the parts out from CAT. So you caught this in time, so the flyweights didn't fly apart inside there or... And totally grenade the right. engine. Right. Yeah, so that's it, awesome. So just perfect timing. As you can see, the face is just from yeah. the pressure of the fly weights and just yeah. fighting all the time. Right? And uh, Phil, my neighbor, warned me of that. He yes. Goes, That's what happens and yes. then it runs away, so. And then these snap rings will wear out too and then the centerpiece starts flopping around inside because right. snap ring has more play. Yeah, more and, and yes. you can see there's a nice groove in there. It's starting to peen over. Uh -huh. Excellent, so. so that's good to go. So let's fire up this bench and yeah, so this is just your typical bench, throw it on there. Yeah. You rebuilt the lift pump? Yes, I did. All new check valves in there. Okay. All new seals of check valve. It comes in a kit, complete yeah. kit. So these injection pumps, they work off all pressure. This is not an injection pump I want to run too long. Okay. Because my bench doesn't have the oil pressure feed. Put oil in there, we can run for a little bit. Okay. Okay, whereas a Bosch injection pump, I can run, I usually run them for three hours, two oh, hours. Oh, really? Do the calibration. Yes. yes. Whereas these cat, it takes oil pressure for the rack, the aneroid, I and see. the oil goes into the advanced unit, feeds your advanced unit. Right on, so yeah. basically we're just simulating the engine driving yes, it. exactly. And then you're measuring, you, you move the rack and you just mm -hmm. measure to make sure that each one is the same yeah. output. Yes, Perfect, sir. let's see it. Fire up. This is the transfer pump pressure, so that's the little pump underneath. Yeah. That's telling that the, it's putting the fuel on top of the plungers. perfect than that. You're looking for them all to be the same. Yeah. We're allowed about six cc difference. Okay. So, which that doesn't make much of a difference. 400 cc. Okay. So 40 at 100 stroke. You must do that thousand stroke, that's 400. That's a lot. Of so as I can, I can do high speed, low speed, and it shows me the test bench shows me the regulation that it cuts in, cuts out. Okay, uh, we can. I can show you here. So it's still got fuel. So I'm going to increase RPM. I'm going to cut the fuel out. So that's telling you there's no chance of a runaway. Okay. Okay. 
I don't want to go high with it. You guys yeah. are around here. Yeah, yeah. I know everything is tight, but it's a real high pump. Right, right. Okay. By rule, I should uh, put. It's called the boss tamper-proof wire. <laughs> Yeah, if you touch this, all war warranty is void? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's called uh, DeBoss tamper-proof wiring, where it goes through the holes of the bolt, and I have to seal the entire injection pump up, so Rich can't blame me for black smoke or anything like that. <laughs> we would never even dream about, about juicing this thing up. <laughs> okay, sure, Rich. Sure. Yeah. And that's about Rich. Timing. Okay, yeah. timing. Pin. Yep. So on your engine, on the same side, you'll see a 3H drill. Okay, there's a notch in the cam coming up. See it? Yeah, there it is. Right? And if you go more, you'll see. Yep. Right? In the back, yep. And that's where you lock it. Perfect. And the engine. So you lock it just by putting a 3H drill bit down the hole? Sure. I'll right. make sure the engine's locked. Okay. And your injection pump's locked. Yep. That's your timing. So Rich, when we install the advanced unit, what's gonna happen? You're gonna try to put you're gonna try put it on. This is gonna go in and out like that. See okay. That? Yeah. Okay. So you wanna make sure this gear is flush. See how it comes back out? Yeah. It's gonna be flush. So okay. when you put it on, you're gonna make sure. See that? Yep. That just lines up. Sideways. With yeah. You wanna make sure you push this back down. Okay. Before you tighten your bolts. Okay. If it moves. You're gonna, it's gonna smoke like a choo choo train. Yeah, we don't have any bearing to go with, though. We don't know if it, like, it's been sitting for 20, it's been sitting for almost 30 years, so it's gonna smoke regardless whether we do it right or not until it kind of warms up and okay. gets all right. Okay. Okay, so we're working on our cat, and even though the ejection pump is on the other side, I pulled the plug out, and I put my little scope in there, if you can see that. And that line right there is the edge of where I need it to be. Now, I can turn it over just with a wrench on the alternator, pushing on the belt. You turn it over slowly and just line that up. I'll put the camera so we can see it. See the line there? Much more. There it is. All right, now I just need to go to the starter and put a pin in that starter plug, and then we can pull the pump. And we pull the timing bands off, which is just a uh, four bolts there that slides off. And then we'll remove the fuel filter and some hoses, so I can get my forks up and over, and maybe throw. I really don't want to take that um, compressor off, but I'll take the hoses off. And then I might be able to sneak a um, cable around that or strap so I can support that. I don't want to throw my back up. There we go. Now I did spray these for couple weeks with that penetrating while we're getting the injection pump built and that WD stuff works great granted that the truck is in decent shape but it is almost 40 years old 35 There aren't that many bolts that hold it on. One in the center there, one there, two on the bottom, and that's it. And then one up here, and then two on the, on the bottom by the oil holes. This one's missing a bunch of parts off the back, so I'm gonna try and manhandle it out myself. Uh, if I take the compressor off, I gotta drain all the coolant, because the coolant level is up. So, it looks good. It looks nice and green, so that's good. I kinda wanna fire it up with the old coolant in it, and wash everything through the system, and then drain it and replace it. So, see if I can manhandle this without throwing up my back. There we go. Fine. I didn't even die. Well, that 
actually went better than I thought. The auto lower feature is pretty slick for an operation like that. Just, just a little bit at a time, but uh, no damage, good to go. Okay, so these pieces are very fragile. They kind of stick out on the end. And because it's heavy, people drop it. So when we bought this pump, threads were smashed out of it. Like a whole chunk of this aluminum housing was off. So this is our old pump. The new pump, the back housing was cracked. So since we already took this apart, we gave that to Zager Diesel there and he used the best parts from everything. This is the gear that drives uh, the camshaft. This is the camshaft lifts up on the plungers. And then this free wheels. So this is the drive gear that runs off of the timing gears inside and this actually drives the camshaft itself so what we can do is it doesn't fit on this one because this is the higher horsepower pump but these splines line up with the camshaft and then these this bolt through the front here goes into the plate here which is what um, would then drive the pump as the weights expand under load it changes your timing to try and uh, get better fuel economy. I don't think they were worried too much about uh, emissions back then. But pretty neat how it works. It just kind of travels through almost like a standard transmission um, and is able to change the timing on it. So we'll throw this in on our pump, put the cone on, and we should be able to fire it up. Now we're just gonna clean this off a little bit just in case, blow that clean and then free lube it with some uh, T6. Okay, so I'll put the hole to the top. Should just be able to slide it in. That's it. All right, so the pen is out of the flywheel. That plug is back in again. We got fuel lines hooked up. I don't think this primer is working, so I used the electric pump to pump it through. Now the mechanical pump should take over. Three injector lines cracked. Cone is on. Those bolts are tight. Those bolts are tight. We should hear, we don't have boost sensing yet, but that's okay. Um, not important for starting. I need a line from here to there. Should hear that click, turn the key on. That clicks, okay. Um, crank it. fuel out of the pump now. Turn that up. Okay, go ahead. temperature and your oil pressure. Yeah, he did tell me to adjust the idle. The idle's a bit high. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, <laughs> that sounds great. That is a good day. Um, we bought this thing again, not knowing anything. This engine sounds good, oil pressure's good, it's firing on all cylinders, it was just hanging up on one. That cleared right up. Um, we're gonna go over this entire thing. Uh, we actually have some really big plans for this thing. Um, this one was definitely worth fixing. And what the heck, when you, you leave it outside and look what happens, all that lead paint just falls off. And then, uh, nice big frame. <laughs> we got some big plans for this one because this one was definitely worth fixing. So the video of all the progress that we've already made in between the injection pump and more is already on DGHD right now. We release both at the same time. So you head over to DGHD. If you're not subscribed there yet, subscribe there. Uh, we haven't posted there for a while because we're super busy in the shop here with the Bronco and the States and all that. Um, but it's there, it's alive and well. As for everything else back in the shop, moving along like crazy again, back at it, full long days. So we got lots of good stuff coming up for you guys. So you just gotta stick around. Uh, because remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. And that seems to be the, the theme a lot. <laughs> All right guys, have a good one. Here we go.